people have exchanged goods since the dawn of history. The challenge for humankind has always been to provide the best possible conditions for this exchange while maximizing the fairness and security. The emergence of financial institutions significantly increased the security of the transactions, but at the same time, it increased their costs. The Internet changed the history of humanity. It not only transcended physical barriers between people, enabling instant exchange of information. Because of its extreme decentralization, the digital world does not require its users to trust each other or to reveal their identity to exchange all kinds of information. However, until recently, all online financial transactions required some sort of a trusted third party to ensure that the money is transferred between the participants. This situation changed radically in 2009 with the deployment of Bitcoin, the first fully decentralized digital currency. But is it possible to design an online protocol without relying on a trusted server so that neither the seller nor the buyer can cheat in it? Join us as Professor Stefan Dziembowski introduces protocols for secure multi-party computations using Bitcoin. Bitcoin deployed by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2009 immediately gained huge popularity due to its distributed nature and the lack of a central authority that controls its transactions. It allows people to do fast and cheap financial transfers over the internet without any trusted third party. A little less known feature of Bitcoin is that it allows the parties to specify more complex conditions about when the money can be spent, so-called smart contracts. A group of Polish cryptologists from University of Warsaw, led by Professor Stefan Dziembowski, were intrigued by this feature and started asking themselves how much it could affect the financial system. Execution is enforced by the Bitcoin system itself. So, in some sense, uh, Bitcoin is not only about decentralizing payments, it's also about the decentralizing the whole financial system. Uh, together with, with contracts and or other types of agreements. We can write contracts in a special language called uh, Bitcoin scripting language uh, in such a way that later the mechanics of Bitcoin will, will, will execute the, 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 the contract. Professor Dziembowski and his students started wondering if this feature could help solve some of the problems in an area of cryptography called multi-party computations. For example, people may want to run some auction or make some voting or maybe simply toss a coin or play cards online in such a way that they don't trust each other and they don't uh, have any trusted part, they just do it uh, uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer way. The protocols have huge potential, but since the beginning of the development of multi-party computations in the 1980s, one problem has remained unsolved – how to force the users of the protocols to respect their outcome. Suppose we toss a coin, then uh, suppose I won, then how do I force you to pay me money, right? Or vice versa. And it turns out that we can actually do it using Bitcoin. So we can write a special Bitcoin contract that somehow incorporates this protocol of Bloom from 1980s. This critical discovery led the scientists to the conclusion that the use of Bitcoin protocols could also enable fair exchange of information over the Internet fair exchange of information. Okay, so suppose I have some secret information and you want to buy this information and you, you know what information you are looking for. So you, you can specify what you want. Uh, and I have this information. Okay, and the moment I show it to you, uh, I have no way to, to, to force you to pay me. And vice versa, if you pay me first, then you have no way to force me to, to show you the information. So it turns out that we can use the Bitcoin protocols, the, the, the Bitcoin contracts, to do it. Find out more in a Research Highlights article Secure Multi-Party Computations on Bitcoin in the April 2016 issue of Communications of the ACM.